go to Philippians chapter 3. Let's begin there this evening. Philippians chapter 3. Kind of been looking at these verses a lot lately, and I think maybe I've mentioned them a few times. But just some really good verses here um, from the Apostle Paul. And actually, I was on the phone with my pastor uh, a couple days ago, and we were discussing these verses also, and I think he's doing a study in, in the church there uh, uh, of Philippians, in the book of Philippians, and uh, just, just a tremendous passage here. It's a book of where Paul is just basically just sharing his heart, you know, and um, chapter 3 deals a lot with here, you know, where he came from, and just all these things that he had to give up. You know, when you come to Christ, you got to give it all up. Amen. You know, it's it's all or nothing. Amen. Yes. That's the yeah. way it works with God. Right. Otherwise, people don't experience true salvation. That's it. Uh, right. Many people may make profession yeah. and they may say a prayer, yes. but if they're just adding God to their life and they want to hold on to their life as it is, um, I'm sorry, but that's not salvation. Right. You're right. And uh, Paul was the real deal. Amen. Amen. We uh, pick it up here in verse number 7. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. But what things were gain to me, gain as far as gain as the world sees. Not gain as far as God sees, but gain as far as what the world would see. You know, the, the world would, would look at Paul's life and say, he's a fool. You know, why would he give up all the advantages that he had you know he could have been a very rich man very powerful man i mean he was well on his way to becoming that was already that way i guess as a young man and would have become even more rich or even more powerful as time went on but paul says no but what things were gain to me those i counted loss for christ hey amen. what a testimony amen wow. it reminds me of uh uh Oh, what's his name? It's on the tip of my tongue. William Borden. William Borden, uh, the millionaire kid, you know? And all that he gave up for the Lord to become a missionary in China, you know? Mm -hmm. Incredible. And I, I love his story. If you've never looked into it, you have to look into William Borden, all right? Tremendous testimony. Incredible. He died when he was like 25, but by the time he was 25, he had made such a huge impact. Wow. He was in Yale. And back in the day, Yale was a good school. And I think he may have gone to Princeton as well. His family were very wealthy from Chicago. And so he went to the best schools, had the best education and so forth. And uh, they really wanted him to take on his dad's business. I think his dad was a silver miner. Uh, he had a mining company. And so they were millionaires back in the early 1900s or late 1800s or early 1900s, whatever it was. Um, and so imagine what that is today. You know, if, if you're a millionaire back in the early 120 some years ago, what would that be? The billionaires today? I don't know. They'd be huge. Anyway, so, but he um, he knew Christ. I think at a fairly young age, mm -hmm. and so for his high school graduation gift, his his parents sent him on a trip around the world. And so he went to all these places, you know, around the world. Him and a friend, I think, maybe went with him, or maybe maybe two friends or whatever. And it took him a year. Can you imagine? A year-long trip around the world. <laughs> Amazing. But instead of coming back um, desiring more of the world, or uh, he just he came back with this longing to be a missionary. During that time, God was burdening his heart wherever he'd go around the world for souls. You know? Wow. And so his family is like, you want to be a what? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Here he is, this rich kid, right? And he's got everything, you know. I think he had like his own yacht, you know. I mean, just incredible story, you know. And uh, he ran a, um, like a, a prayer group or something at Yale. and. Yeah. He started Bible clubs, you know, and he was kind of in charge of the student rally and stuff, you know, they would do back in the day. Because back in the day, these like Harvard, Princeton, Yale, these big universities, they used to be Bible colleges. They, they were based on, you know, studying the Bible back in the day. And so I guess there was still enough influence, you know, from Christians 
back when he was in school that they could still do these sort of things. You know, have a huge rally of a thousand students and you get together and pray and, you know, have preaching and singing and stuff like that. Of course, that's unheard of today. But, uh, yeah, he would, he would, you know, be in charge of all these things, right? He made a huge impact on all these young people because they knew how rich he was, you know, and yet he was willing to give all that up. And so he yeah. sets off for China. He never makes it. He dies on the way. But, oh, man, at, at his funeral, I mean, no doubt. I mean, they, they say that many people, many, many people turn to Christ. More people turn to Christ in his death than mm -hmm. during his lifetime, you know, that he led to the Lord. And, but just an incredible testimony. You know, and I, I, I think of, of him when I, when I read this verse, uh, Philippians chapter 3 and verse 7. He lived it. Uh, now on to verse number 8. Yea, doubtless, Paul says, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. Nothing is more exciting, like I said on Sunday, than learning more about God. That's true. Than getting to know God. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's true. That should be our life pursuit. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him. Hmm. How good do we know Christ? Huh? How close are we to him? You know, yes. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend for that which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Now notice verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Okay, this is, this is uh, the next, uh, these two verses here, 13 and 14. They really fit in well with the, with the message tonight. Okay, so pay, pay close attention. But this one thing I do, Paul says, forgetting those things which are behind mm -hmm. and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Now, verse 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. All right. Now, with those verses in mind, let's think about where we are today. Okay. Concerning what's been going on over the past uh, few months with the coronavirus and that and the things that God's been doing in your heart and my heart during this time. Uh, it's been a, like I've been saying, it's been a very good time spiritually for us to get alone and get close to God and search our hearts. And maybe we've had more time, you know, to spend with the Lord during this time. And, you know, we've had to shut ourselves away. It hasn't been that much interaction with the world and so forth. So. Uh, a lot of that has been very good for, for you, okay, during this time. Now, now what's going to happen is, though, once things open up, we're going to be tempted to slide back. We're going to be yeah. tempted to go back to where we were. Yeah. We're tempted to, to go back to the flesh or the ways, our old ways, rather than progressing spiritually like we're doing, okay? Right. It, it's going to happen. And so uh, let's keep going forward, like Paul says. Let's, let's not go back, okay? We know what the Lord says about those that uh, turn back, okay? Um, in uh, Luke chapter 9 and verse 57, the Lord says there in uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 57, And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. Some people talk very flowery words and they, they sound very religious, you know, and you think, man, they must be the Apostle Paul. They must be the, another John the Baptist. And Jesus said unto him, foxes have holes and the birds have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. And Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, verse 62, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. And that's why I said earlier, it's all or nothing with God. When you come to God, it's all or nothing. Now, I believe if you're truly saved, I believe you came to God 
and you gave him your all. Amen? Yeah. Would you not admit that? That yes. you gave God, you gave Christ your all? Yes. When you got saved. And that's the only way to be saved. In the context, there, God, the Lord is talking to lost people there. Amen? And so God wants us to come all or nothing. Now, if you've done that, mm -hmm. let's continue. I'm encouraging you tonight to continue to give him your all. That's right. Okay? Because this is what God expects. This is what we should do. This is what is expected of us, all right? It's God's people. Um, John chapter 6 and verse 66. Let's read a verse there. John 6, verse 66. It says there, From that time, many of His disciples went back. Yeah. Went back. And walked no more with Him. I don't believe they were saved. I don't believe they were true believers. I think they were religious. You know, they were... Just trying this thing out, you know, because the, the context there. Um, but let's go to Hebrews now and look at a passage that we know applies to the believer. Let's look at that one. Hebrews chapter number 10. Hebrews chapter number 10. No doubt about this. This is referring to the believer. We see there in uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 26, it says, For if we, the we there is the people of God, if we look down in uh, uh, verse number 30, again, it says, For we know Him. Okay? The we is the people of God. No doubt about it, this context here is talking about the people of God. For we know Him, verse 30, that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge, say it with me, His people. This is the people of God. This is us. Amen? The believers. It is a fearful thing, verse 31, to fall into the hands of the living God, but call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great five afflictions, partly whilst you made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst ye became companions of them that were so used. For ye had compassion of me and in my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Of course, that has to be talking about the people of God. Right? That can't be referring to the lost there. Now, verse 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Mm -hmm. Wonderful confidence, right? right? That God gives to His believers, to His, to His people, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now, verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I read that verse... I thought of Revelation chapter 4 and verse number 11. You know the verse. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Why were you made? You're made for God's pleasure. It would be good for all of us to say this prayer. God, do I bring You pleasure? Lord, is the life I'm living right now, wow. does it bring you pleasure? Because that's why you were made. That's why I was made. I need to be bringing Him pleasure. Yes. Okay? The Bible says back in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in, him. in other words, you're not doing what you were intended for. You're, you're, you're not fulfilling your, uh, your purpose and plan and the reason why God has you here. Can you imagine that? Not giving God any pleasure in your life. Why? Because you've, you've drawn back. You've turned back. Let's not turn back. Amen? That's good. Amen. As things open up, as you go back to work, or as you uh, interact more with the world and, and uh, lost people, okay? Remember what God's been doing in your heart here lately, Christian. Yeah. Okay? And don't draw back. No. Don't turn back. Don't turn back to the flesh. Let's keep going forward towards God, forward towards the Spirit. Yes. Okay? And God continue to work in our hearts. Good. Because God says if we draw back, I have no pleasure in you. You bring me no pleasure. Mm. And that's why you were created, Christian. Right. That's why we were made. 
To bring God pleasure. Right. And then verse 39, But we are not of them which draw back unto perdition, but of them which believe to the saving of the soul. Uh, certainly, uh, we are not of them that uh, would be utterly lost and or destroyed in perdition. But we are, we are God's children, but we can still draw back, though. Okay? Maybe not go as far as to lose our salvation, but we can, we can backslide, and we can lose our joy, yep. and we can become uh, basically useless for God. Uh, okay? That's a scary thing. Yeah, it is. All right? To think that that could happen to me, that could happen to you. You know? I don't want that to happen to you. I want God to continue to work in your heart and God to use you and see you develop spiritually and you become a challenge to me and to the church. Right. And be a right. blessing right. to so many around you. Pacific Golden Hold on. Clover. There you go. Right. Very uh, interesting little bird, isn't it? Very interesting bird. Mm -hmm. First point I'd like to make about the Pacific Golden Clover is that it's just a puny little bird. And how it doesn't look very strong. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't look like. I mean, you might look at an eagle and think, okay, maybe an eagle could make it from Alaska to Hawaii, you know, because it's such a big, strong looking, you know, bird. Or, mm -hmm. But it's just a puny little bird, about the size of a dove. Really small. You know, really small. That's so uh, We, spiritually speaking, are, you know, pretty puny. You know, yeah. we, we really are. We're, God compares us to being like sheep and. You know, we're kind of weak and sometimes very weak-minded. And uh, mm, it's true. even the things, you know, David said about man uh, are so true. Uh, Psalm 8 and uh, verse number 3. David says, When I consider thy heavens and the work of thy fingers, the moon, the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we are puny. Yeah. Like yeah. a little bird. And maybe sometimes we look at ourselves mm -hmm. and spiritually speaking, we're like, I can't do this. You know? Yeah. Well, you know what? You're right. No. You yeah. can't do it. It's true. <laughs> there, there's no yeah. way. You know, yeah. what, what he just said, I mean, these guys are scientists or whatever, and, and they look into these things, and uh, I don't know maybe all the, the details in that, but uh, it, it just... They burn a, what, what, a gram every hour during flight time, and they, uh, they gain about 70 grams or so. And if, if it's an 80 hour, 88 hour flight from Alaska to Hawaii or wherever they're going, uh, yeah, they don't make it, do they? I mean, <laughs> yeah, sure, there's you know, them flying together and all that. I guess that helps a little bit, but still, it, it's, it's a miracle that they make it. And another thing, too, uh, these birds don't swim, so they can't stop for a break. Uh, they don't. They don't get in the water. They don't float around the. They're not like ducks. You know, they just they just stay along the shore. You know, and they feed. Uh, you saw them feeding on the shore. That's what they do, mm -hmm. right? They don't go in the water. And so, if they don't have enough fuel to make it, then they die. You know, mm -hmm. but incredibly, they make it. Amen. Mm -hmm. So it's just an incredible thing. So God has to do it. I mean. Right. But even though we're puny and you know, we look at ourselves, I mean, there's just no way I can live this spiritual life. I just can't do it. Well, you're right. Without right. the Lord performing a miracle, you're exactly right. right. We need a miracle from God. And we serve a great God. Amen. And if He's able to get the Pacific Golden yes. Plover from Alaska all the way to Hawaii, over 2,000 miles, straight flight, 88 hours of flying time, this little puny little bird... The size of a dove. <laughs> yeah. God can do a miracle for you. Yes. God can do a miracle so for me. True. And That's we can right. be spiritually victorious and reach our destination. Yeah. Wow. Okay? It can happen. Yeah. Number two, um, notice that, you know, the, the young ones, when, when they start off, they got to do this like first time on their own. You know, they don't have mommy and daddy. Mommy and Daddy have already took off, mm. and and they're they're still back up there in Alaska feeding and trying to get ready, you know, for this big trip that they're going to take, and so they set off by themselves first time, you know, uh, they've never done this before, yeah. and uh, we all have to learn to trust God 
on our own. I know we've got others to kind of help us along the way, but still, it's just you and God, really, when it gets down to it. It's you and God, yep. you know? I think that's the reason why if the prophet Habakkuk said in chapter number 2, and verse number 4, Behold his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. That's the only word in the Bible that it says, his faith. So it makes it very personal, doesn't it? Right. That verse. There's a reason why the Holy Spirit had the prophet Habakkuk say it that way, that particular way. Is for at least one time in Scripture we see it's a very personal thing. Yeah. It's, it's a walk between you and God. you got to trust God on your own. We can do a lot to be helpers of your joy and to encourage you in the Lord. And we're trying to do that through you know, doing church services during the week. Miss Eva doing the ladies' meetings and so forth. Miss Abby doing her, um, her uh, videos and stuff online and that. Trying to be an encouragement. But there's only so much we can do. You have to walk with God on your own. I have to walk with God on my own. Right. My personal time, yes. it's, it's me and God. And just me trusting the Lord and walking with Him. Wow. Okay? And these little birds, you know, they, they start off, man. They, how do they even know where they're going? I mean, yeah. it's, it's just, it's incredible, you know? Absolutely incredible. And also, too, we notice uh, that they prepare for the trip. Amen? Are we preparing? Are we doing what we need to do? Are we doing what God expects us to do to obey the two spiritual parents, the Word of God, the Spirit of God within us, and to prepare our hearts? Uh, we see in the book of Ezra how he prepared himself as the priest, the man of God, the spokesperson for God to, to Israel during this time period. In chapter number 7 and verse number 10, it says this, for Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. Are we faithful to prepare our heart? I know many of you are doing more Bible study here lately than maybe you've ever done in your whole life. And that's good. I'm, I'm glad that you're doing more. You're memorizing verses and you're being faithful. And that's great. Uh, let's keep it up, amen? Yeah. As, as time changes yeah. now, or as time uh, moves forward and things open up and, you know, um, we get past the virus and uh, things get back to somewhat normal, uh, let's continue in these things. Let's not give them up and uh, let's continue preparing, all right? Just like the little bird that they're feeding and getting that 70 grams of food and getting ready for the big trip, let's prepare, let's do our, do our part. If the bird just set off and said, oh, I, got, I had a few little snacks, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go, and didn't take the time to feed properly, it, right. it wouldn't make it. That's okay? good. I know it takes a miracle. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm just saying God still wants us to do our part. We have to, right. Okay? You do your part, and uh, God will do His part. God will, God will pick up the slack, but we got to do our part. Yeah. Though. God's, God's just not going to do it all for us. Some people just want God to do it all. That's it. No, right. God yeah. wants to see you put your heart into this thing. Yeah. That's it. Right. He'll do His part. He'll come through for you. He'll do a miracle. Yeah. But you got to do your part. The little bird has to do its part. God does a miracle. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah. Okay. How that little bird can make it all the way to Hawaii. 88 hours of flight time. This little bitty little bird. Okay. Yeah. Over 2,000 miles. Straight shot. Okay. No stop. There's no land in between. Nowhere to stop. Okay? It can't stop in the water. It doesn't, it doesn't swim. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a miracle, but the bird still has to do its part. Yeah. Right. It's engineered in its brain. It has to eat a certain amount. It has to do this. It must do this, and so it prepares. We have to do the same. Yeah. Let's be, continue to be faithful yes. at preparing our hearts. That's very good. To seek the Lord and to do it and to be a teacher of men to help others Amen. around us. Amen. Not only just think of ourselves, not to get just spiritually fat, but, but to use it to be a blessing yes. to others and encouragement Amen. to others. Yeah. Okay? Another thing here uh, concerning the golden plover is that, you know, in this trip, you know, it's, they, they only fly forward. They, there's, there's no going back. Right. You know, and how many times do we, in our flesh, we turn back? You know, we... We, we set up for God maybe for a few days or, or maybe a week or two or something. You know, we're just gung-ho for God. And then we just, 
It's like we scurry back up to Alaska. We, we go, we turn around yes. and we go back. Let's call Alaska in this picture here, in this spiritual allegory, a type of our flesh. Okay? And Hawaii, a type of our spirit. Or walking in the spirit. Letting the Spirit of God have its way in our life, in our hearts, okay? So if we turn back, we're giving in to our flesh. So what's happening to us? We're no longer trusting God. We're no longer looking to Him. And uh, we're, we're giving in to the desires, again, of the flesh, whether it be the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, or the pride of life. All sins fall into those three categories. Okay, and, and one of those three, we're giving in, and um, we're, we're just, we're scared, right? We're scared. Right. We don't think we can make it. And in and of ourselves, we can't make it. But it, it's just like Peter, you know, when he started to sink, you know, in the water, it was because he started to look around at the waves and the storm. Yeah. And we do the same thing, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, but these birds, they don't turn around. They keep going. I'm sure they get, they get tired. I'm sure they're like, man, where are those islands? You know, <laughs> I've been flying for 60 hours. Right. I've been flying for 70 hours. I've been flying for 80 hours. And then these islands are still not there. Right. Yeah. Mom and daddy said they'd be there, but they're not. Yeah. No, I, I don't know how they know about the Hawaiian islands. Right. I mean, it's not like their parents can discuss this, but I don't know. It's not like their, their parents show them a brochure, you know. <laughs> we really got to go here for vacation. It's really nice there. Yeah, nice and warm. I don't know. It's amazing, you know. But God's got all this in their head, you know. They're just, they're just trained. They're just, they just know how to do it. Um, but they just, they keep going. They don't turn around. They don't like many times we do, just like we read there in Hebrews, right? Um, what's our verse there in chapter number ten? If you go back there, just for a moment. Now the just shall live. Um, That's good. Focus on that wow. word just for a moment, okay? The just shall live by faith. Right. That means all the time. Yeah. That means every right. moment. These right. birds, they don't stop. That's right. We can't stop for a moment. It's true. We can't take a break from being a Christian for a moment. Right. We can't take an hour off. We can't take a day off. Where I'm just going to flesh out today. I'm just going to do whatever my yeah. flesh wants me to do. I'm just going to give in to my flesh today. I'm just going to... You can't do that. Okay? All right? That's turning around. That's heading back to Alaska. That's giving in to your flesh. That's getting scared. When you live by faith, you're trusting God. You're strong in the Lord. You're getting spiritually more mature. Why? Because you're heading towards Jesus. Jesus is in Hawaii. Right. <laughs> Hawaii is where Jesus is. It's where it's warm. Okay? <laughs> All right. Don't you want to be where it's warm? Don't you want to be in Hawaii yeah. with Jesus? That's good. Amen. Spiritually speaking, yeah. we want to be with Jesus where it's warm. I want to get away from the cold. As long as you stay up here, you're cold on God. Yeah. As long as you right. live for the flesh, you're cold on God. It's cold in Alaska. Right? We need to get out of there and keep going with God and live by faith. Live all the time, consistently. Trusting God, even if it's hard, it's, it's going to be hard. It's going yeah. to be difficult. It's going to be rough. It's, so hard. it's hard to buffet this yeah. flesh and, yeah. and say, yes, you will serve God. And yes, you will do right. And yes, you will read your Bible. And yes, you will study. And yeah. you will, you know, give your heart to God and fully. And uh, yeah, it's rough. It's yes, tough. It okay. And it's rough to say no to your flesh and say, no, you're not going to. No, we're not, we're not turning around. No, we're not yeah. going back. Not going and, and spending time with worldly friends. No, we're not spending time with the right. lost. We're going to stay right. with God's people. Yeah. We're, we're going to witness to the lost. If we can have an influence with the lost and share the gospel with them, we'll do that. But we're not hanging out with them. Mm -hmm. No, we're going to stay with God's crowd. We're going to do God's will. Yeah. We're going to stay spiritually minded on the things of God. Okay. We're going to keep Good. heading to Hawaii where Jesus is. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. We're yeah. going to get out of the cold country and go where it's warm. Praise God. The closer you get to God, the warmer your heart's going to get. Oh, yeah. The sweeter yeah. you're going to get. 
The closer you get to Hawaii, the more the more sweeter you're gonna be. Amen. <laughs> amen. Let's stay on, on let's stay on track. Amen. Let's keep living in the in the yeah. spirit. Let's uh, let's keep living by faith, because if any man draw back, my soul shall have yeah. no pleasure in him. God says. Okay. God has no pleasure when you keep going back to Alaska because you're scared. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. I don't know about this walking by faith. I don't know. I'm going to go back to Alaska. Wow. I, I don't care if it's cold. Yeah. And, I, I, and I'm, yeah. I'm breaking my fellowship with God. I don't care if it's cold and my heart gets cold on God. I'm going to go back there anyway because I'm scared. Right. You yeah. know? These birds don't do that. Why do you do that? These puny, wow. these puny little birds. Okay? Well, they weigh half a pound. Yeah. They don't yeah. do that. Why do you do that spiritually? Oh. Okay. Why do we do that spiritually? Wow, man. Ow. They stay the course. Yeah. Let's stay the course. Amen. Amen. How are we ever going to grow up spiritually? How are we ever going to become strong unless we make it to where God wants us to be? Mm. To that place of rest right. in Christ. Yeah. That place of mis spiritual maturity. That's the Hawaii for the believer. Okay? That's the goal, to be walking in the Spirit, to be filled with the Spirit. That's Hawaii, not up here. Okay? Right. we got a ways to go. All right? And God wants us to be on that, that, that great trip that He's, He's prepared for us. Okay? Amen. He's given us the tools, and He will perform a miracle if we do our part. Are we doing our part? Or are we saying like, nah, I'm turning around. Nah. Yeah. Nah, this just ain't for me. I just, maybe some of those other Christians there, they can be just great, you know, and, you know, spiritual and, you know, walk by faith. And nah, it just ain't working for me. Wow. It's wrong, Christian. It's wrong. Okay. Amen. We can all walk with God. Yeah. And, and we can all get closer to God, okay? This is what God wants. As you get closer to while, you're getting closer to God. Spirit within you is getting stronger, amen? And uh, God's having His way in your heart and your life, and, and you're getting warmer. It's getting, it's getting warmer and warmer, amen? Amen. As you get closer to God, you get closer amen. to Jesus. Let's go to Hawaii, amen? Amen. Let's go to Hawaii. Amen. Spiritual Hawaii. Yes. Will you go with me to Hawaii? Only forward. Only forward. Only forward. No turning around. There is no turning around. Don't think that's okay. All right? Don't think that's somehow allowed. Okay? Let's read it again. Hebrews 10, 38. It's not allowed. Now the just shall live by faith. Every moment. Right? Trusting God. Going forward. But if any man draw back, anybody, that's including you. That's including me. My soul shall have no pleasure in him. God is displeased when we turn around and go back and feed our flesh and flesh out. God's displeased with us. Right. Don't think that God's okay. Well, God will understand. No. No, he's well, displeased. He has no pleasure in you. Right, and that's what Okay, I and you're doing me. that. God wants you to stay the course. Okay? You prepared yourself. You done what you need to do. Now you trust in God. You're on your way. And He will sustain you. He'll be your sustainer. The people around you, the church and whatever, are the helpers of your joy, but they're not your sustainer. God will sustain you and God will perform a miracle and you will make it. Amen. Yeah. If you'll live by faith. Amen. And you'll trust God. It's going to be tough. It's going to be rough. But you can make it. That's good. Because God will kick in. And That's God will help good. you. But he's got to see you being real with him and walking by yes. faith. Amen. Will you truly live by faith? Wow. We will be tested, won't we? God will test us. Okay? And so, um, also too, let me just say, it, it takes a miracle. Amen? Uh, it's, 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 it's a miracle, okay, that, that, that these little birds make it all the, all the way to Hawaii. It's just, it's just an incredible thing. How do they even know where to go? I mean, if, if they're just off a little bit, you know? I mean, they don't have to be off by much. If their trajectory is off a little bit, they could be off yeah. by yeah. hundreds of miles and just totally miss the mark, you know? It's just, um, those islands aren't that big. No. But you know, they hit them dead on. You know, it's just, it's incredible um, how God directs them. 
this speaks of the miracle that God can do in our life. Okay? Amen. You must believe. Just like you believed on the Lord when you right. gave your heart to Him, you gave your all to Him, you must continue to believe the same way, not for salvation, but continue to walk that way and believe in Him that way every day. The just shall live yep. by faith because this is the only way to please God. Hebrews 11.6. Let me uh, end with this verse tonight. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Impossible. Will you believe God on the trip? Will you stay the course, Christian? All right? And not turn around to your flesh, but keep going towards the Spirit of God, obeying the Spirit of God, submitting to the Spirit of God, saying, yes, I know this is hard, I know this is rough, and i got to make some separations from the world. i got to make some separation from, from some people, some people, some friends and family and whatever acquaintances in my life that do not believe right. They don't believe the same as we do. They don't believe the Bible. i got to make some separations from them. i got to stay the course. God wants me to do this. This is right. It may not, may not make sense to them or it may not make sense to the world. But like the Apostle Paul, I count all things but loss. All right. And I'm going to stay the course by the grace of God. I'm going to live by faith and do what God says, even though it's tough, even though it's rough. All right. Just like yeah. the plover. This is rough. This is hard. OK. And God will kick in. All right. And right. he will perform yeah. a miracle. All right. A miracle true. will happen. Yeah. Wow. He's so faithful. And you'll make it to the place of rest, nice. of warmth. All right? Your heart will get warm. Amen. <laughs> when God does the work in your heart, you'll Amen. just get warmer and warmer and warmer and warmer. Amen. And all that coldness of the flesh will melt away. Yep. Wow. Amen. And you say, goodbye, Alaska. Hello, Hawaii. Amen. <laughs> and you are having party time with Jesus down there in Hawaii. Amen. Amen. That, that's the way it ought to be. That's Christian good. people, God's people ought to be happy people. Amen. 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 <laughs> having a party time in Hawaii with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Walking in the spirit of God where that's it's nice good. and warm, warm in your heart, good. warm in your soul. Uh, this is the way it should be. This is what God wants you to enjoy, Christian. But you gotta do your part. You gotta right. make those separations, even though they may be difficult. Some people may not understand you. Yeah. Uh, why are you so straight laced? Why you gotta be so hard? Why you gotta be so narrow minded? Yeah. Hey, let them say what they want to. Exactly. You're following God. Yeah. You're following the Lord. You're following yeah. Jesus. Amen. Yeah. And you're getting closer to Him yeah. all the time. Wow. Uh, what if the plover, what if it listened to, I don't know, something and it, it, it turned around and, yeah. you know, maybe there's a bird flying north. And, yeah, come back with us, you know. And it was, no, 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 no. we got to stay the course, amen? You know? Got to stay that course. No, no, we're going to Hawaii. Yeah. That's good. And ain't nothing going to turn us around. Right. Amen. It's a life of faith. And uh, it's, it's the only way to please God. Right. But without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Amen. And so let's keep pressing towards the mark. Amen. Like Paul Amen. said, Philippians 3.14, I press toward the mark for the prize. Don't you want the prize? Amen. Aren't you sick and tired of the world's prizes? Right. Don't they let you down? Yeah. They just keep letting you down and letting you down and letting you down. And let... That's because they're temporal. Yeah. And they cannot satisfy. They especially can't satisfy a saved person. Once you've experienced Jesus, nothing right. else even comes close to Christ, comes close to the joy that you've experienced now. Uh, no way. All right? And that's why I say a backslidden Christian is the most miserable person in the world, even more miserable than a lost person that, than they can get. All right? Because we've experienced what real joy is, what real peace right. is, all right? What real love is. And so let's press toward the mark for the prize, the high calling of God, in Christ Jesus, like the Pacific Golden Plover. Amen? Yeah. All right. right. Praise God. That's good.